Anyway, all right. Well, Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 34. The Bible says, Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Well, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people don't understand that there has been a plot to destroy this country long ago. Okay, from long ago. It's not a new plot. It wasn't a new idea. It was set to failure, okay, in many, in many respects. It was set to, the demise of it was set up long, long ago. Um, but there, are moder- there were more modern day people back in the 1800s or so, in the late 1800s, 1850s, 1860s, 1870s, who had a plan uh, to destroy this nation. And uh, to destroy any nation, really, it was a, it was a plan that, or a pattern that you could find. But this, particular group, uh, they were Luciferians, and they had a plot to destroy, and they had the means to do it as well, to set it up. And a lot of people don't understand, but there was a 10-point plot to destroy America. And uh, it was very effective, and it's worked. And we're seeing the demise of this country around us. We're watching it fail. And it's because of this verse right here that righteousness exalted the nation. When there was righteousness in the land, when it was exalted, the nation was better off. It was a, it was a nation when righteousness was its, was its desire of the, of the people of this nation. We saw the power of God work in this country. We saw many people saved and lives changed and churches planted. And, and uh, there began to be a concentrated group of Christians here. They weren't just in one denomination, but in many denominations. And they, would, they filled the land with, with righteousness. But the powers that be couldn't have that. And there is an end to this. There is an end coming to, to all of this because there's a battle. There's a war, and there's an end to that war eventually. But anyway, Alice Bailey. Uh, have anybody ever heard of Alice Bailey? Very wicked lady. She had a 10-point Luciferian plot to destroy America. She also had the means to do it and the operation to do it and the the people in place to do it. Not really her, but the devil had it in place. All she had to do was get a plan from from devils and implement that plan. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her, and then I'm going to tell you what the plan was so you understand who this person really was. And by the way, these are real people. These these same teachings that I'm going to tell you about today, these same teachings are lifted up by New Agers and One Worlders right now, in your government now. They just know to wait years to let it go by, so these names mean nothing anymore. Hey, what you say, preach, I don't know, you're, you're kind of exaggerating, aren't you, a little bit? No, I'm not. See, because back in 2001, it was the most terrible thing you could imagine to question 9-11. It was the absolute worst thing. Now you have senators that are like, well, yeah, we lied. (laughs) We just did an internal investigation. Senators came out a week or two ago. Internal investigation proves that they lied about Saudi Arabia's uh, contribution to 9-11 in the... the... Well, of course they did. Now, whether that senator is right about what was lied about, we all know it was a lie in the first place. Just like the Patriot Act was and every other act. What's the point? The point is that they just wait a few years till it doesn't matter anymore. And they've dumbed you down with enough stuff on television and movies and drugs and alcohol and pornography and everything else that you don't care anymore. That's right. Drink a little more fluorine. So Alice Ann Bailey, often known as Alice Bailey. Reminds me of Alice Cooper or something. I don't know why it was here. June 1880, Manchester, England. She was a writer and lecturer on neo-theosophy. She was born in England in 1880 as Alice Bateman. She moved to America in 1907 where she spent the rest of her life. She was the high priestess and prophetess of the New Age movement. She was a prolific author on occultism and founded an international esoteric movement. Sir John Sinclair, a 32nd degree Mason, gives a commentary on the semi on the seminal influence of Alice Bailey, which he says underlies the consciousness growth movement in the 20th century. It underlines, this is a plan that underlines it. Alice founded the publishing company, you ready for this? Lucifer Trust. 
Now, she got smart a little bit and changed the name to, to uh, uh, Lucis Trust, okay? But, her, but the original name of it, the publishing company, was Lucifer Trust. Why? It's pretty obvious why, right? Foster and Alice Bailey. Foster was her husband. He was a 33rd degree Mason. They started a group called World Goodwill, an official non-government organization within the United Nations. The stated aim of this group is to cooperate in the world of preparation for the reappearance of the Christ. Anybody want to guess who the Christ is? Antichrist. That's right. Mm -hmm. The Christ, she called him. One Earth, the magazine of the Finhorn Foundation in October of 1986 said this, forgetting the things that lie behind, I will strive towards my higher spiritual possibilities. I did, this is Alice Bailey, by the way. Uh, it was recorded in this. Uh, I dedicate myself anew to the service of the coming one. And will do all I can to prepare men's minds and hearts for that event. I have no other life intention. You mean, preacher, do you really believe there are people out there that are really trying to prepare the world for the Antichrist like you were trying to call men to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Yep, and they work harder than you do. Because guess what? Compared to modern-day Christianity, they actually believe it. They believe Lucifer's coming. They believe the Antichrist is coming, and they are preparing for him. Their comments, uh, now this is from their website here. There are comments on the, on the internet claiming that the Lucis Trust was once called the Lucifer Trust. This is what her website says. Such was never the case. However, for a brief period of two or three years in the early 1920s, when Alice and Foster Bailey were beginning to publish the books published under her name, they named their fledging publishing company Lucifer Publishing Company. By 1925, the name was changed to Lucis Publishing Company and has remained so ever since. Both Lucifer and Lucis come from the same root word. Against the Latin generative case meaning of light. The Bailey's reasons for choosing, they, this is what they say on their website, the Bailey's reasons for choosing the original name are not known to us. Well, I do. They were Luciferians. That's, I mean, why is that so hard to understand? That's why they used the name, because they're Luciferians. They're not ashamed of their God. The Bailey's reason for choosing the original name are not known to us, but we can only surmise that they, like the great teacher, Helena Blavatsky, the great teacher. Anybody know who Helena Blavatsky is? Oh, you'll find out if you don't know, but you, you, you'll be surprised at how much her influence. You wonder where things come from sometimes. You're like, where does this come from? Well, it comes from hell. We know that, okay, it comes from the devil. But there are earthly players involved. Where does it come from? Well, Helena, Helena Blavatsky is one of them. She's one of the major players that occult workings come. By the way, does anybody know who, who read after Helena Blavatsky? Nate, who was one of the influential leaders in the world that dominated the world and read after her? Blavatsky. What's that? Hitler. Yeah, Crowley knew her too, by the way. But that's true. But Hitler. That's right. And Crowley knew who she was too, Absolutely. I mean, all these players that lived around the same age, they knew each other were. They knew each other. Yeah, he did like Margaret Sanger. Alice, Alice and Foster Bailey were serious. Okay, anyway, so he says here, the Blavatsky, for whom they had enormous respect, how could you have enormous respect for that wicked devil, sought to elicit a deeper understanding of the sacrifice made by Lucifer. Catching it? What do they believe? Well, these people believe that Lucifer, well, I'll tell you what they believe right here. I'll just give it to you here. Alice and Foster Bailey were serious students of the teachers of theosophy, a spiritual tradition which views Lucifer as one of the solar angels, those advanced beings who theosophy says descended, thus fall, from Venus to our planet eons ago to bring the principle of mind to what was then animal man. Animal man. Oh, that's weird. Animal man. Animal man became thinking man. I don't know. It's just... Right? Animal man. It's kind of funny, isn't it? It's kind of funny. In the theosophical 
Theosophical, I don't know, whatever. Perspective, the descent of these solar angels was not a fall into sin or disgrace, but rather an act of great sacrifice. As is suggested in the name Lucifer, which means light bearer. See, Lucifer left heaven to give you light. Isn't that the same thing he said to Eve? Didn't he offer her light and that she would be able to live forever? Has anything changed? No, it's the same story. It's just they pervert it. She says this, first of all, he will come to a world which is essentially one world. She's talking about the Antichrist. She said in the reappearance of Christ, she said this, the major effect of his appearance will surely be to demonstrate in every land the effects of a spirit of inclusiveness, an inclusiveness which will be channeled or expressed through him. All who seek right humane, human relations will be gathered automatically to him. Boy, she's not kidding either, because I'm telling you, she's just telling you what the Bible says is going to happen when those that reject Christ, when Antichrist comes on the scene, what are they going to do? They're going to be given strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Whether they are one in the great religions or not, all who see no true or basic difference between religion and religion or between man and man or nation and nation will rally around him. What is she saying? You stubborn people that won't, that will stick to this book, those people on the earth in those days, whenever that comes to pass, those people that stick to this Bible and say, we don't want any of your Luciferianism. So what are they doing now? They're knocking down all the doctrinal walls everywhere in these churches. And that's what's happening now. Why? To prepare for Antichrist. And she knew it back in 1880. Those who embody the spirit of exclusiveness and separateness will stand automatically and equally revealed and all men will know them for what they are. True? I agree. Those that will not take the mark of the beast... Right? When will Lucifer come, she said. The reply comes with clarity. He will come unfailingly when a measure of peace has been restored. The externalization of the hierarchy. Or like Aaron puts it, the numptification of the hierarchy. <laughs> Some of you don't get that, it's okay. <laughs> Right, Aaron? It's the notification. The major, sorry. Ah. Oh. The major required preparation for the coming of the Christ is a world at peace. However, that peace must be based on an educated goodwill, which will lead inevitably to right human relations and therefore to the establishment of lines of light between nation and nations. Religion and religion, group and group, man and man. Now, how did she start to, and I'm going to give you an idea of, of the influential players behind her, then we'll get to the actual 10 points, which are really not that long. All right, Dr. Robert Mueller. Anybody ever heard of him? He was the former assistant secretary general of the United Nations. What did he do? Well, he, he followed Alice Bailey's writings to a T. He followed Alice Bailey to it. He said, decide to open yourself to God, the universe, to all your brethren and sisters, to your inner life, inner self, to the potential of the human race, to the infinity of your inner self, and you will become the universe. You will become infinity. It just sounds like that guy took like way too many hits of acid or something. I mean, that's, that's really what that sounds like, doesn't it? It just does. That's what it sounds like. If you've never been around people that done things like that, well, that's what they sound like when they say things like that. You will become infinity. You will be at long last your real, divine, stupendous self. Stupid self. Hey, it's what he said. The philosophy of the Robert Mueller school. The underlying philosophy on which Robert Mueller based his school is based will be found in the teachings set forth in the books of Alice Bailey. 
So he was control of the UN. He, he, was, he was in the UN. And he had control of what? What do you think? The school is now certified as a United Nations Associated School providing education for inter- international cooperation and peace. Isn't that nice? Yeah, they are a bunch of warmongers. Well, they've got to kill people first to have peace, right? That's how it works. You've got to kill everybody to have peace. Then you have peace. Well, yeah, you do because everybody's dead. Yeah, peace in your country. Yeah. What is the Robert Mueller School? The Robert Mueller School is the education program that will be enforced by the United Nations. This means that soon your kids could be learning from the same books as Alice Bailey. Within the United Nations in the, is the germ and seed of a great international meditating reflective group. This is what Alice Bailey said about the United Nations back then. A group of thinking and informed men and women in whose hands lies the destiny of humanity. This is, a largely un, this is largely under the control of many fourth ray disciples. I mean, that's, you can't get any more blunt than that, can you? Yeah. If you could but realize it, and their point of meditative focus is the in, in, intuitional or Buddhic plan, the plane upon which all hierarchical activity is today to be found. What is she speaking of? New Age mysticism and the coming Antichrist. Alice Bailey received messages from, from this spirit called Dwa Cool. I know it sounds like a rapper, right? That's what Scott, Scott Johnson said. It sounds like a rapper, right? Dwa Cool. That's his name. This is, but this was Lucifer. This is a, a devil speaking through her. Suffice to say, she said that, that I am a Tibetan of a certain degree. This is the, this is the, Draw a cool guy speaking through her. And this tell you but little, for all the, our disciples from the humblest aspirant up to and beyond the Christ himself, those associated with me in the work of the hierarchy, know me by still another name in office, Alice Bailey, knows who I am and recognizes me by two of my names. I am a brother of yours who has traveled a little longer on the path than has the average student. She's an ascended master. He's speaking of an ascended master. These are people that communicate with devils. These are people that work in the UN now and work in high-level governments all over this world and in this country right now. Why do you think they have an anti-Christ agenda? I must therefore act as a transmitter of light, no matter what the cost. My work is to teach and spread the knowledge of the ageless wisdom wherever I can find a response. Alice Bailey goes on to say this, and we're done with her, thank the Lord. The Tibetan has asked me to make clear that when he is speaking of the Christ, he is referring to his official name as the head of the hierarchy. The Christ works for all men irrespective of their faith. He does not belong to the Christian world any more than the Buddhist or the Mohammedan or any other faith. There is no need for any man to join the Christian church in order to be affiliated with Christ. The requirements are to love your fellow man, lead a disciplined life, recognize the divinity in all faiths and all beings, and rule your daily life with love. Wait a minute, are you saying that's the love gospel? gospel Right, that's the love gospel. Every faith. What are they preaching? Alice Bailey, the UN, they preach, what are they preaching? Well, they're preaching the love gospel. The one that everybody wants when you go out in the street and you talk to them. The one that Christians, so-called professing Christians, rebuke you for when there's, where's your love at? Where's your love at? You don't want love. You spit on that love. You rejected that love. What, by the way, this is nothing more than work salvation, what they're preaching. You just believe all faiths. And Christ, Christ doesn't belong to the Christians. He belongs to everybody. The Christ. It's not the Christ of the Bible. Okay, so what is the plan? Here's the plan. Number one, take God and prayer out of the education system. She said this, change curriculum. Alice Bailey said this, change curriculum to ensure that children are freed from the bondage of Christian culture. Why? Because children go to school to be equipped to face life. They are willing to trust and they are willing to value what has been given to them. If you take God out of education... They will unconsciously form a resolve that God is not necessary to face life. They will focus on those things the school counts them worthy to be passed on, and they will look at God as an additional, if one can afford the additional.
Why do you think today they introduced trans- transcendental medita- meditation in schools, which takes children to an altered state of consciousness to meet with devils? Number two, she said, reduce parental authority over the children. I mean, you've heard of right, UN child rights. You've heard of that, right? Right? You've heard, has anybody heard of children's rights through the UN, that they want to use that to trump the Constitution? Right? They want to use that to trump the state constitutions, and they want to enact children's rights. Don't come up to me and talk to me about children's rights. Look, you little runt. You got the right to obey. That's what you got the right to do. Amen. What's the Bible say? It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So you think they knew that? Yeah, they knew that. So here's their plan. Listen to what she said. Break the communication between parent and child. Why? So that parents do not pass on their Christian traditions to their children. Liberate children from the bondage of their parents' traditions. Okay, now what does every every wicked devil walk up and say to my son when they walk by? Don't tell me this stuff isn't real. I see it every day out there. They walk up to my... Look, kid, you can learn learn the truth someday. You can come out of all this and you can believe. You you can learn the truth. You can can be like me, a bum that's sitting on a corner that's got nothing with a 40 in my hand. I had to share that with three people because we had to split it because we didn't have enough money to buy one. But you can be like me, kid. Or some kid, some guy walks up that his face fell in a tackle box. He's got piercings everywhere, tattooed eyeballs and everything else. Walking up to my son and saying, you see that kid? He really hates being here. Don't you see how much he hates being here? Yeah, he hates being here so much that if I gave him that microphone right now, he'd preach your head off. That's what he'd do. You should have seen it yesterday. Some guy, see, that kid don't want to be here. Let him talk. Kids in my church that are 13 talk. It's like, well, he's 10. <laughs> but, I mean, but, I mean... I was like, what are you talking about? I can't shut him up. Yeah, what church does that guy go to? (laughs) So they said, break the communication between the parents. How do you do that? By promoting excessive child rights. What do we hear about? We hear that same thing, child's rights, child's rights legislation. UNICEF Charter does that. Uh, in South Africa today, a child is able to say to their parent, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to do what you're telling me to do. Teachers cannot talk to children. Children step up and say, I have my rights. You can't talk to me like that. Have you seen, now you see in schools, what's going on in schools? You see students beating teachers up now. I'm t- go, don't believe me? Go YouTube it. I just seen like, I seen one the other day, this kid stepped up. This teacher stepped up, and this kid just d- dropped this teacher down. All he's do- teacher wasn't even doing anything. wasn't being aggressive or anything. just standing there. And this kid beat him down in front of everybody and laughed at him. And the students aren't doing it. They're just standing there on la- laughing at him. I think it's funny. Why? Well, because you think children have rights. That's why. Next, they say abolish corporal punishment. Got to get rid of that, right? Biblical discipline. Can't have any of that, right? Can't have any biblical discipline. Never mind what the Bible says, right, about the rod of correction. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, and the rod of correction driveth it far from him. Still believe God, or have you fell for evolution too? Because evolution will make a monkey out of you. Don't believe me? Walk downtown with me. I'll show you a bunch of people that evolution made a monkey out of. Because they all act like a bunch of crazy animals. Got no control over their mouths, their tongues, have no decency, no honor, can't keep their clothes on, can't keep their mouths shut, can't say anything productive, talk like a trash can. What do they act like? A bunch of animals they've been raised to act like and trained to act like. Why? Because we evolved away from the rod of correction. And we also evolved away from fathers being fathers and actually being home, and not just some kind of a donor. Amen. Is that too real for you? I hope it is. I wake you up. C, teachers are the agent of implementation. From workshops, teachers tell children. We know about workshops, don't we, Nate? We just did a radio show yesterday about a, a, a school. You've got to listen to that radio show. We just did about, about this school, right? This school had their own little workshops. Well, they'd go, the smitten kitten. 
father had three kids in that school. And he said, I was appalled when my, te- when my children came home and told me that they were at the smitten kitten. You say, You're, does your kid know what a smitten kitten is? No, he doesn't know what a smitten kitten is. Now he's, he's seen downtown, he's seen these wicked shops, and he knows to preach against them. But I forgot, no, it's bad. I had one guy tell me, that's child abuse that your son's out here on the street. I said, there's like a thousand kids walking by right here. This is a baseball game. Why, is it, why would it be wrong for, why would it be child abuse for my son to stand on the street? How come it's not child abuse for them taking him into that, that game right there? See the games they play? From workshops, teachers tell children. Your parent has no right to force you to pray or read your Bible. You are yourself. You have, the, you have a right of your own. You need to discover yourself. Self-expression, self-realization, self-fulfillment. You've heard all those buzzwords, right? Selfishness. Will land yourself in hell. Because yourself is not very good. Yourself is wicked. In the West, when the child, this is a quote from this man here. In the West, when the child is seven, the teachers begin to say, the child, you have the right to choose whether you want to follow the faith of your parents or not. Parents are not allowed to enforce their faith upon you. By the way, what type of a decision can a seven-year-old really make like that? Right, you can choose your own gender. That's what they have in kids now. Just choose your own gender. Oh, you were born a boy? You don't want to be a boy anymore? Well, you can be a girl now. Is that the most foolish thing you've ever heard in your life? Number three, she said, destroy the Christian family structure. What did we say about the Sodomite movement? What was it all about? Destroying the family. Destroying the family. Changing the dynamic of what a family is. Why? Because with strong families, the devil doesn't win. Okay? He loses. He loses the nation. He, lo- he, doesn't, he, he, he loses against the churches because they're following God's order. Amen? Proverbs 31, 27 says this about a wife. says, She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. What does the Bible say about families? Psalms 20, 68, verse number 6. God set at the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. It is oppressive to these today and the family in the core of this nation. If you break the family, she said, you break the nation. Liberate the people from the confines of this structure. So how do I do that? How do I break up the family? Yeah, Satan wants to break up the family. A, promote promiscuity. Free young people to the concept of premarital intimacy. I'm using a nicer word than she used. But you get the point, right? Free them to think, free their mind from that concept that you're supposed to be married that it is not good for a man to touch a woman. Let, nevertheless, let every man have his own wife and every wife have her own husband. Free them of that concept. That's what she said. Let them have free intimacy, whatever they want to do. Basically, free fornication. Just run around, do whatever you want. Lift it so high that the joy of enjoying it is the highest joy in life. Have they not done that? Has I not made it seem like the feelings of, from intimacy and that is of more importance than anything? Oh, preacher, I don't know. Well, listen, I'm telling you. You got a commercial with a half-naked lady holding a bottle of water. Now, what does a bottle of water have to do with a half-naked lady? Am I right? It's true, right? You got a popsicle, you got to sell a popsicle, you sell some fruit snacks. I don't care what it is, anything you want to sell, you watch the commercial on it, and it's going to have somebody naked almost in it. Some lady in a bikini. In a car, it's going to have some hat. Selling a car, it's going to be some half-naked lady on it. Why? This is the reason why. This is why that's happening. 
because they know that that over and over and over and over and over in a child's mind, as they grow up watching that, what are they going to desire? That and only that. That's what will motivate them. That's what will excite them. That's what they will want in life. They won't care about having a family. So now what do you tell people? Oh, that, you don't have to be married to do that. Children losing their purity in, like, in, in junior high. Nine years old, some of them. Nine years old. Losing their purity. Why? Well, because some wicked, Luciferian, rotten devil had a good plan, from their perspective anyway, to destroy families and destroy America. Free young people. This, she, she said this is the only way that you could bring the Antichrist. It's the highest joy in life. Fantasize it that everybody will feel proud to be seen to be sexually active, even those outside of marriage. What does the Bible say? Well, we know what the Bible says about the marriage bed is undefiled. Amen? But whoremongers and whores, God will judge. Right? And, and adulterers, God will judge. So that's what she said to use. B, she said, use advertising industry, media, magazines, film industry to promote that enjoyment, that intimacy enjoyment as the highest pleasure in humanity. Works, they did it. Like we just said, every advertisement, every advertisement is about that. Number four, if that intimacy is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. By the way, God says different. God says in Proverbs 6, 16, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. What is abortion? Hands that shed innocent blood. From the father, the mother, and the abortion doctor, and the nurses. They are all the hands, and I'm telling you what. You know, listen to me, I'm going to tell you what. We don't, we, we don't understand what happened in this country. And we don't understand the curse that's upon this curse. I'm going to tell you what, this is a cursed nation. You put a fork in it, friend. It is cursed. God did not forgive nations that shed innocent blood. They were not forgiven. Don't believe me? Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse number 10. That innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. 2 Kings 24, 4, and also for the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. I don't think we understand the seriousness of it. Friend, it wasn't enough that we shed our own baby's blood over here. Now we just export it all over the world. We pay for abortions in every country. I'm telling you, you're in Babylon. You are right here in it. It is the most wicked nation on earth right here. Hands down, the hardest hearted people live in this nation. Right here, innocent blood right here. So much shed that God said he would not pardon. 55 million, yeah. Since 1973, 55 million. That we know of, right. And that's not counting the ones we've paid for overseas. All over, and that's not counting all the innocent children we've murdered and slaughtered through our military exports all over the world. Yeah, day after pills, everything else. I'm telling you. And you got people waving a flag saying, God bless America. Oh, you ain't getting me to do it. I'm sorry. I'm just not doing it. I'm praying. I'm praying for it. But I understand that we don't deserve it. We don't deserve a blessing. This country hasn't even owned its own sin. Are you kidding me? It hasn't even owned its own sin. She said, build, abor- build clinics for abortion, health clinics in schools. If people are going to enjoy the joy of a sexual relationship, they need to be free of unnecessary fears. In other words, they should not be hampered with unwanted pregnancies. Wait, 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 stop. Who said that? Think. Who said that? What's that? I, I'm sorry. Margaret Sanger said that too. But 
Who in authority just said this a few years ago? Your president, that's right. What did he say? I don't want my daughter to be punished with a child with an unwanted pregnancy. That's what he said. That's right, yeah, exactly. That's what he said, though, isn't it? He said, I don't want my daughter to be punished with an unwanted pregnancy. Um, you understand that these people are Luciferian? Do you get it? Luciferianism is the end time religion. Okay? You're going to see that whore on the hill in Rome is morphing into that completely. Completely. That's what the morph job is. That's what the morphing is now. That's why the doctrinal divisions are being dissolved. Openly, they already have been for a long time. Jesuits are in every, every denomination, every government, every, every municipality, everywhere you can imagine, in every walk of life. They are doctors. They are lawyers. They are judges. They are Supreme Court justices. They are presidents. They are cabinet workers. They are full, they're in Congress. They are generals in military. They are on the battlefield. They are everywhere. She said, if people are going to enjoy that, they don't need to worry about that. Abortion, as told by Christians, is oppressive and denies our rights. We have a right to choose whether we want to have a child or not. If a woman does not want the pregnancy, she should have the freedom to get rid of the pregnancy, painless and as easy as possible. Today is not only accessible, it is forced. Today, abortion is a strategy to curb population control together with the use of other things, other contraceptive devices. Number five. Make divorce easy and legal. Free people from the concept of marriage for life. What is she saying? Alice wrote for over 65 years ago, over 65 years ago, that love has got a mysterious link called the love bond. It is like an ovum that comes out of the ovary as it travels through your system. It clicks a love favor in you, and there's one other person in the world who can respond to that love bond. When you see that person, everything within you clicks. That is your man-woman. If you miss him, you'll never be happy until that love bond cycle pass, cycles passed for many years. So for you to be happy, get that person at whatever cost. If it means getting him or her out of that marriage, get, him, get her or him out. It's a mistake for him or her to be elsewhere. And if you go together for some time and find that love has died, don't be held in bondage by Christian values. It will never come back. What you need is an easily arranged divorce and allow another love bond to come forth, just like an ovum comes up, and when it comes forth, you'll enjoy life again. So what is she saying? She's talking about an open marriage. That's what she's saying. She's not talking about somebody that actually, you know... You get saved and the other person doesn't want to be married and they, they leave you. That's not what she's talking about. She is talking about an open marriage like Will Smith and his wife just admitted they have. They have an open marriage. He's a big guy. He can take care of himself. I don't worry about him too much. As long as he can look himself in the mirror, that's all that matters to me, she said. So, anyway, th- these other comments that I said after what she said to make divorce are based on a commentary of her, of her writings there. Number six, make homosexu- homosexuality an alternative lifestyle. Alice Bailey, she preached, and this is a quote from a, from a commentator, that, that, that enjoyment is the highest pleasure in humanity. No one must be denied and no one must be restricted how to enjoy themselves. People should be allowed in whichever way they, they cho- choose they want, whether it's homosexuality or incest or bestiality, as long as the two agree. Remember what I told you this morning? Mm -hmm. They don't care. In the world today, so many laws have been made that promote homosexuality and give so much freedom to gay rights that a time will come when it is illegal for a preacher to mention homosexuality is an abomination in the eyes of God. We're heading there now. Or to read scriptures publicly that talk about homosexuality. This, and this quote that says, At the international scene, Western nations now sanction African countries that have resisted homosexuality with threats of withdrawing foreign and aid and investments. They've threatened these countries because there's black countries out there. They won't. They're like, no, you're not, you're not doing that here. We kill them here. They cut their heads off. I'm not saying that's what they should do. I'm just telling you that's what they do. Okay? They don't, they don't, they're like, no, you're not coming in here, and they'll kill you. That's what they'll do. So these countries are saying, now, if you stand against homosexuality in any way, well, then if you have an open policy against homosexuality in any way, 
we're, gonna, we're not going to give you any aid. We'll let you starve. So what are they using? The U.S. is using their money to influence. But the Bible says, thou shalt not lie with mankind, isn't it? With, as with mankind, it's an abomination. So the Bible says. But what do they say? Push it. You'll destroy that nation. You'll, you'll, bring, you'll bring a nation down, right? If you, can, if you can infuse homosexuality in it. What would happen with the Roman Empire? That's what they did with the Roman Empire. I mean, there was the Roman Republic, and they turned it into an empire, and they destroyed it. Number seven, debase art, make it run mad. Promote new forms of art which will corrupt and defile the imagination of people because art is the language of the spirit, that which is inside. You can bring out in painting, music, drama, etc. Look at the quality of the music that is coming out. The films like Hollywood and things like that, look what they're doing. I mean, the art in this country is supposed to be intelligence and everything. It is debased, it is debauched, it is just wicked. I mean, if you go into like regular art studios now, the people that actually do art and paint work and everything, it's, it's always something like defiling or wicked or morbid. Uh, today, I'll give you an example of this. If you go on Facebook, you can go to this. It's like morbid pictures. Have you ever seen these? Where they, they have their kids dress up like zombies with blood dripping from their face and like, like fake hatchets in their skull and, and stuff like that. And they take pictures of their children like that. It's called like zombie art or something. And they're taking these, these morbid pictures of their children dressed up like zombies with blood dripping from their face like they just ate something. Yeah. Number eight, use media to promote and change mindset. Well, we, we covered that the other day, but that's the greatest channel you need to use to change human attitude is media. So she said, use the press, the radio, the TV, the cinema. And we understand that fornication outside of marriage, that is shown, how, many to- how much now? Everything. All the shows that you used to think was good, because they didn't have any explicit stuff in them, all showed a different concept of the family, all showed a different concept of the father and mother, all showed the father as like some crazy barbarian that wasn't smart enough that his wife had to calm him down all the time because he wasn't smart enough to function. You know, like a, he was just like a gorilla or an ape or something that went crazy. If his daughter was dressed like a tramp then he, and he went crazy over it, and the mom like told him to calm down or whatever. Right? That's pretty much what it is. All those kind of things. What? And then, and then, and uh, the exploitation of children on television now. Right? I mean, they are literally dressing these girls up like whores on television. At a very young age. Right? Parade them down the street. When you, they had this parade here this year in September, this Jesse James days. There's going to be a bunch of girls dancing on these floats as they go by. Skin, uh, skimpy dressed little girls dancing in front of a bunch of men that are cheering it on. Disgusting. It's gross. But it's just the pedophilia pushes all this. They're gonna know, by the way, that's when I said bestiality, I also meant pedophilia. That's that's normalizing. They're trying to normalize that now in society. They are trying to normalize that in society. And they're doing their best to do it right now. They say an average of 80 80 to 90 times a day, if you watch television, commercials, movies, and and look at magazines, promiscuity is being pushed. Free love is being pushed. Mm -hmm. Number nine, create an interfaith movement. Right? Right? That was her plan. Promote other faiths to be set at, to be at par with Christianity. And break this thing about Christianity as being the only way to heaven. By that, Christianity will be pulled down and other faiths promoted. She said, promote the importance of man in determining his own future and destiny. Humanism. That's what that is. She said, tell man he has the right to choose what he wants to be. And he can make it happen. He has the right to determine his cause. This takes God off his throne. Interfaith movements are rising everywhere, right? We're seeing it with Chrislam. 
We're seeing Catholicism cross over with all, all the branches of Protestantism in some Baptist churches. Right? We're seeing dialogues with Muslims and, like, and, and, um, and different evangelical leaders. Oh, we got to have a dialogue. Talk about what? Make it easy. You're going to hell. That's, there's nothing. Okay, that's it. Repent or you're going to hell. That's the dialogue. There you go. That's the only one you need. That's it. Number 10, get governments to make all these law and get the church to endorse these changes. The church must change its doctrine and accommodate the people by accepting these things and put them into the structures and systems. What is that? She's saying, get in bed with Jezebel and Babylon. That's what she's saying. In order for it, listen, in this country... In this country, there is no way this plan would be effective unless the churches were on board. Because if the churches were fighting this right now, all of this stuff, it never would have got this far. We'd have kicked them Luciferians to the curb and they'd have been running out of this nation. We'd have expelled the Federal Reserve. Amen? We would have set that bunch of uh, murdering Jesuits in a boat. Halfway over and blew it up. That's mean. No, they're murderers. They're butchers. They're killers. But instead, what did we do? We accepted the, U- the, the UN. The churches came on board through the World Council of Churches. And they have the same agenda. And Alice Bailey's 10-point plan, the externalization of the hierarchy, is working just like it was supposed to. And you'll always have a remnant of people that will stand opposed to it and will fight it, but most people will give in to it. And most people will allow all these things to be normalized because they have been. Look around you. This was talked about back in the early 1900s. And now it's implemented. Every single one of these 10 things have been implemented. See, that kingdom is very patient. So those, those, those Illuminati New World Order types, what they do is they just wait. And they wait, and sometimes they die, and they pass it on to their children. And they keep it all in that bloodline, and they wait, and they allow the next generation of children to come along. And they will fulfill it. Just like George Bush Sr. wanted to fulfill a lot more when he was in office than he really did. But he did it through his son and through the others. Yep. Because they're very patient, and they wait. And now you're seeing, now you're seeing everything, everything that she talked about, you're seeing come to pass. Because because American Christianity is morphing into Luciferianism. Right before your eyes, you are seeing it. They are denying everything about this faith. They are using the same names, but redefining the words. They're not going to stop using Jesus' name. They're not going to start using, stop using Christ's name. They're not going to stop using the same terms we do. They're going to change what love is to something else that God said it wasn't. They're going to change grace into the, into the grace of our God into lasciviousness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They're not going to do away with the names they're going to change the definitions, and that's what they've done. So they've changed Christianity to be nothing more than an inter, interdenominational, interfaith, interfaith belief. Yeah, a journey, that's right. So guess who can come on board? Why do you think Masons can go into every church today, most churches today? Why do you think they can go into most churches today? Because they're comfortable there. The door's open. Why do you, why do you think these uh, charisma, the charismatic movement and, 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 and the, the, the CCM crowd and, and Roman Catholicism can all get along and work together? Why can they have big uh, sunshine festivals or whatever? Why can they have that? Because they, don't, they no longer hold to the tenets of this book. They have departed from the faith. And they've been, they've been taken by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's what's happened. And that's where it's at. And this plan has worked nearly flawlessly. The only thing that remains is a remnant around this country that still believes this book. But that remnant is shrinking, it seems. 
or it is that the number is growing stronger that's, a, that's opposed to us. Because once you start defining this book and preaching this book exactly the way it's written, the lines are drawn. And there's going to be people that you're going to see fall away because they were never real. And when you see that Antichrist kingdom coming and the rise of it, when you see it, when you see the demonic things that are coming to this, this world, you're going to see it. Before it was talked about as a possibility you could upload your brain. Now these guys say, we got it. We can do it now. They're admitting it. We can do it now. And we will live on forever. Now, of course, they won't. Their soul won't. But they're going to upload it. What are they doing? They're getting around God. This is all the plan, the Luciferian plan, and it's worked. And only a few are going to stand up. Many will fall away. Father, thank you. Thank you for the truth of it. Thank you for defense against it, Lord. Thank you for your words. Lord, we're to know what went on in history so we can understand not to repeat it. And we see in your word that all these wicked, these wicked Luciferians do is just prove the word of God to be true and that the battle is real. Dear God, help us to take it more serious than they do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.